Another great new feature inside Mathematica 9 is the Input Assistant. And Ian, tell us about the great Input Assistant. Sure. Uh, so for version 9, we spent a lot of time working on making it easier for users to be able to uh, take advantage of all the capabilities inside of Mathematica. And part of that was the suggestion bar Lou just finished uh, describing to us. But the other part to it is also what we call assistants. Assistants are basically tools to help you accomplish particular tasks. Um, they are narrow in scope, and they basically help you do, do what you need to get done quickly. And for version 9, we have two of them, uh, and we'll have many more, I'm sure, in future versions. But today, I'm going to talk to you about the Input Assistant. Uh, the Input Assistant is actually a collection of tools inside uh, the interface that help you develop your code for either your package, your application, or your documents. Those contain basically of auto completion, we have function template insertion, and then we have new in version 9 dynamic highlighting, uh, which I will describe later. Uh, auto completion actually existed inside of previous versions of Mathematica in a somewhat uh, similar form. Uh, we've expanded on it greatly for version 9 to make it more useful. Uh, as you can see here, the, uh, the list is much shorter than, than you typically would see in previous versions because we put the most frequently used functions first. Uh, in case the, none, uh, the, all the choices that are presented aren't the one that you were looking for, you can expand it uh, clicking on the expansion button at the bottom and it will show you the remaining, uh, the remaining symbols. Uh, there's also a link uh, in the upper right hand, uh, in the right hand portion of it for each symbol that will take you to the documentation in case you're interested in a particular symbol that, symbol that you may not have used before and want to know more about it. Um, the, the biggest part for autocompletion in version 9, though, is the fact that it is learning now. If you notice, I said most frequently used, and that's absolutely the truth. The more that you use autocompletion, the more it will learn which symbols you prefer to use, and they will slowly begin to move their way up in the listing, so that way you can work and get what you need done faster, which is a really neat, uh, really neat feature. And much like version 8, the completions uh, menu is used for both system symbols and user-defined symbols. So if you're interested in looking up plot 3D, it's just one click away. Temporary directory as well is just right there. It saves you a lot of time typing out very long symbol names, especially ones like your user-defined functions. Now the interesting bit with the user-defined functions are that in previous versions, they would be listed alphabetically, so they would be lost in the, in the mix. In version 9, we've made it so user symbols percolate their way to the top because they're more frequently used in context uh, than system symbols. And that's the same true for variables as well. Um, one of the most requested features for completion has been options. Um, options, a lot of our functions take very many options. Um, and it, it was always a, a feature that was highly requested. And so for version 9, we actually made it so we can do option completion. Here I have a plot uh, that I'm not particularly fond of the color. Um, so I'm going to change it. And lo and behold, this gives me a completion list of only the options that are available for plot 3D. And then when I insert it, I get a nice little template to help you fill in the rest without having to worry about all the structural bits behind it. So there, so now I've just changed my plot to something that looks a little better, in my opinion. Um, the other important thing is, is that completions, uh, option completions are, know about the, op uh, the function that they're associated with. So here I have a clock gauge, which clock gauge is new in version 9. Um, and, you know, it's a clock. I would like it to update on a one second uh, interval. So, you know, me, just being me, I'm going to try and type in, oops, update interval. But update interval doesn't apply to, uh, to clock gauge, so it will not complete. However, if I would to do dynamic, oops, let me, if I could type it correctly and insert it properly. But see, update interval now shows up in the, in the completion listing there. Um, this, in and of by itself, uh, has saved me arguably large amounts of time um, as I'm writing things. Um, and while we were in here, you might as well keep going. 
Um, so instead of just doing options, we also complete contexts. I'm notorious for using exceedingly long context names. Um, why, I'm not 100% certain, but I do. Uh, and so it makes it really convenient so that you can actually, when working with packages, uh, or in my case, just contexts in general, uh, it's very easy to actually complete them. Uh, so you don't have to type them all in. What makes it even more convenient is, is that you can chain them. So I can actually get to fully qualified symbol names relative, with relative ease, um, which just makes, and that for me can actually take quite a bit of time to actually type in. Uh, and I can just uh, do it in just a few keyboard short, uh, keyboard events. Um, we also did it for character completions. Um, long names are the honest to God truth in terms of naming. They are long um, and quite, you know, but they're awfully uh, terribly useful to use in general. Uh, so for long names, you can actually just do, oops, integral, and you'll get a listing of all the characters that match uh, the, the long name that you start typing out. Um, so here I'm gonna write just a silly little uh, a silly little integral, and it also works with escape sequences as well. Um, so aliases are sometimes harder to remember than the actual long names themselves. Uh, so this makes it really convenient um, to be able to uh, work with long uh, with special characters easily. Um, and it also works for here's a good example of one that's actually really long to type. And it gives you a various list. There's some of these in this list I didn't even know that we had. In, it's a nice way to discover new characters that you might not know that we actually supported. Um, so that's completions. And new uh, for version nine, we also decided that if we had all these really nice completions, it would also be really nice to have all of the uh, uh, function templates that uh, you know actually be usable uh, as opposed to in version eight where it just inserts a single template, um, which you know, a lot of our functions have multiple signature types to it, uh, and it would always be nice to have the ability to select which one you wanted inserted. Uh, here's the general interface for it. Uh, it gives you a list, uh, gives you the usage description, so that way you can actually, if you've never used that particular signature before, you can actually read up on it and understand it, and if you want, you can click on the documentation link to learn more. Uh, if you may, you may or may not have noticed, but as I, when you insert a completion, uh, you'll get this little drop down arrow here, uh, which you can click on, and that will actually bring up the exact same listing that I just have here. Um, makes it really easy, really easy to use. Um, and here's just a, a trivial little example. I have an image. Um, I don't do image processing very often, so when I do, uh, I typically don't have all these things off the tip of my tongue. But I have a manipulate here that I know I want to do. Um, I, I know I want to do image uh, resize. There we go. That's the thing I was, oops, resize. That's the thing that I was looking for. I have image. I know that, um, oops, sorry. I know that I want to vary the width and height independently. Uh, so I'm going to insert that guy for it. And there's my image. And we have width and height. And then. For my manipulate, I want to be able to modify the width from 10 to let's say 128, and the height from 10 to 128. So there we go. There's my quick little manipulate that allows me to do it. But I was able to just use the function template to actually insert uh, the the signature for the uh, fu for the function that I don't typically use and have remembered off the top of my head. So that's function templates. And the third final bit to, uh, to the input assistant is dynamic highlighting, which is arguably my favorite feature in version 9, because I often work with code that comes from other users, either internal or external. And so dynamic highlighting helps me understand the structure of this, of this piece of code that I happen to receive from someone. It allows you to always know exactly where you are. Um, in version six, I think it was, is when we introduced syntax coloring. Um, and in version six, I would, how I would do this would typically be, I'd end up having some deeply nested list structure, and I'd end up ripping out the trailing, oops, I'd end up ripping out the trailing uh, braces to actually see the match on, uh, in syntax coloring elsewhere, because it's a lot easier to see color on a white 
background than it is to actually try and count all these physical little braces along the way. Um, so that is, it, it has saved me so many hours of just clicking to expand my selection to try and figure out exactly where I am. Um, some common examples uh, for dynamic highlighting, they work for lists, they show you, you know, braces, they work for um, precedents, so for parens, uh, they obviously work for functions, of course, um, you know, it gives you a nice little way to know what function you're in. It works with complex function heads, which is really nice. So if you have f of g of h of args, you know, it will actually parse the expression so you know that the head of this is f of g, and then if you go one level deeper, it's f of g of h. Um, it works for pure functions, uh, which I use pure functions a lot, and it's nice to know that inside of uh, my body here, that the head of it is actually the function, the ampersand. Um, and it'll of course show you that the entire pure function is, is the head for, uh, of this. Um, it works for prefix and postfix operators. Uh, obviously that's pretty self-sufficient there. It's really nice for postfix um, because sometimes that gets lost really easily because it's a side effect. Uh, um, it's off to the side separated from the rest of it. Um, it also works in output cells. This I use more often than anything because a lot of times I work with um, I work with the XML, so I'll do import of you know some piece of XML, and you'll end up getting back a very deeply nested um, you know structured piece of structured data, and it's really nice to be able to go oh the element you know the head of this element is this other element up here. It's very easy because it's uh, it's very easy to lose track of where you are. And it also works as well, you know, with functions in output as well. Um, we have, and there's some places that it won't. Uh, obviously, if it doesn't have a head, it doesn't actually uh, highlight. Uh, and you don't need it when syntax coloring is involved. So for comments and strings, um, it's already pretty obvious exactly where the bounds of those are. Um, and if you're curious to know more about the, uh, the input assistant, there's some links here. Uh, to, in the documentation center to not only just how to use the input assistant, but also the predictive interfaces uh, in general. Uh, and hopefully with the, uh, with the input assistant, we can help you write better code with less errors. Uh, it's certainly a great new feature of Mathematica 9 and new users to experienced users can certainly find a lot from it. And my, one question is, can you customize it at all? Oh, yeah. I mean, other than the fact that, you know, as you use it, symbols will move their way up and down. You can actually control the, the colors that are used for the highlighting inside of dynamic highlighting, of course. And then you can obviously, if you prefer the, the more manual approach, uh, you can obviously turn it off. You can also change the delays of how quickly you want the, uh, the, the menus to actually pop up. Well, to learn more about the input assistant, like Ian mentioned, go ahead and visit the documentation center.